Hey, my name is Eric. In today's video, we're talking about the five dysfunctions of a team by Patrick Lencioni. So with any dysfunctional team or organization, really there's three components to it. The overarching umbrella of everything is culture, but underneath that, typically when you're dealing with a problem, it can be really summarized between two different variables. It could be a people problem, or it can be a process problem, and then sometimes it's a little bit of both. So the first bit of actionable advice in this video is in the description below is a free worksheet that's gonna help you clarify the actual problem that you're dealing with. So what we're looking at on the screen right now is cracked drywall. If you were just trying to fix this issue quickly, what you would do is put some joint compound on here, maybe some tape and then paint it and then be done with it. But a lot of times the issue is that we're not looking at the overall picture. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, you might have a different visual of what the problem is now. You may say, you know what? It might be that window above and you have water damage coming through. So the issue is not simply just the drywall, but it's actually probably the window and water damage coming through. So the reason I bring this up is a lot of times people see the issue at hand within their business and they try to put a quick patch on it, but they don't kind of zoom out and get that 30,000 foot view of what the actual problem is. So that's why the free resource is so helpful in the description below because it allows you to really get a clear picture of the overall issue and problem at hand so then you can go forward addressing it. At the end of this video, we're gonna explain the nuances of that worksheet in more detail, but right now I'd like to get into the review of five dysfunctions of a team by Patrick Lencioni. So what you see on the screen here is a pyramid, and this is represented throughout the book as it talks about the five dysfunctions, because each dysfunction is kind of built upon the last one. So at the base, at the foundation, the core dysfunction of the five dysfunctions of a team is trust. Because without trust, nothing works, right? If you can't trust your employees, if your employees can't trust you, if the leadership team is fighting and they don't really trust each other, then nothing is going to work. Now you'll notice I use the word fighting. Now that is different than conflict. Conflict is the second dysfunction of a team. A lot of times unhealthy organizations do not have proper trust. And because of that, they actually lack healthy conflict. Now to some, it may feel like a bad thing if you have conflict, but a healthy amount of dialogue and conflict is good in an organization. Now, a really good example of this is actually at Bridgewater Associates. It's the largest head fund management company in the world. It was founded by Ray Dalio, who wrote the book Principles. And in that book, he talks about the fact that his company, that he encourages every employee to have radical candor and to speak up. So if somebody who is an intern who just got their first job there thinks that the CEO is mailing it in in a meeting or is not presenting their ideas clear enough, he can actually challenge the CEO. And in the book, he says this actually happened and he believed that employee was correct. What Ray Dalio did is he actually emailed that critical feedback he got from somebody who was 30 layers lower than him and emailed it to the entire corporation and said, this is what we want. This is great feedback. I need more of this please let me know if you see any issues like this in the future. Now, I know this sounds scary, but it's so crucial because he's sending that message to everybody at the company that this is a safe place. It is okay if you even criticize the CEO. Of course, you wanna do it constructively, but it's so important to have that healthy conflict. Now, if you're somebody who's conflict adverse and you don't feel comfortable with that, somebody who does a really great job of navigating conflict with his employees as far as feedback goes is John Mackey, who is the CEO of Whole Foods. He's also the founder. And what he recommends is that for every negative piece of feedback you give, try and give about nine positive pieces of feedback. Now, you're not trying to be disingenuous and being like, I really like that tie if you don't like that tie. But what you're trying to do is catch them doing something right. So it's so important because he says when you do this and you catch your employees, or you catch other people on your leadership team doing something right, and you can do this nine times, genuinely giving them positive feedback, that you're creating that trust, you're creating that bond with them. So then when there is that moment where you think there might be something awry and you give them that critical feedback, it's more well-received because you have trust amongst the team. Now, the third level of the pyramid is commitment, sometimes referred to as buy-in, but you want everybody on your team to understand what the vision of your company is, where the direction is going, and then most importantly, they need to be committed to that vision and direction. If people are not truly committed and they're thinking selfishly and just about their own personal gains, the team is not going to be cohesive and it's not going to work and you're going to have dysfunction. So it's very important to have a solid commitment amongst your team. And one of the best ways you can do that is going through a process and figuring out what exactly it is you're committed to. Now, the analogy that's used here a lot is people rowing in a boat. Now, when everybody's rowing in the same direction and you're in unison, that boat can move at pretty good speeds. But if just one person isn't committed and they're not in rhythm with the rest of the team, that boat is going to go off course and you're not going to hit your targets and your goals. So it's very important that everybody is committed to the same vision. Now, on top of this is accountability. 
Now, one of the easiest things at this point is if you find people are not being accountable, this is where KPIs can come in, key performance indicators. Now, you wanna have it very simple for people and have them clearly understand what they're accountable to. Now, most times in an organization when accountability is lacking, it's because trust, conflict, and commitment are lacking as well. But if those things are starting to get into place and starting to get in tuned, the other way that a lot of times accountability is lacking is really a lack of communication. It's possible that the person working beside you or the person reporting to you is actually unclear of what they are accountable to. This is why things like KPIs, key performance indicators are so powerful because if you can simplify and clarify what it is that person's accountable for, then you can make it easier for them to be accountable to their job. Now let's say that your company is doing well with trust, conflict, and commitment, but let's Let's say that your salesperson feels like they're lacking accountability. Well, it could be a situation where perhaps that person is actually unclear of what they need to be producing. Sometimes people give people vague goals or KPIs. Hey, I want you to close $20,000 of new business every month and that is your goal. Sometimes these people in these positions sometimes don't have a clear understanding of what it's gonna to take to get there. And what you can do is create accountability by focusing on the KPIs, the key performance indicators. So let's take a look at the salesperson. So he knows he needs $20,000 of business per month to be closed, but he may be kind of ambiguous or misunderstanding what it's going to take to get to that. So that's where you can kind of look at upstream indicators. Let's say hypothetically from looking at company data that the average sale is $5,000. What that tells us if we go upstream is that we know we need four sales a month to hit our target goal. But then we need to know is how many sales leads do we need and then how many meetings do we need to book in order to hit that goal. So let's say that 25% of sales meetings end up in a closed piece of business. So if we need four sales at the end of the month, this means that we're going to need 16 quality sales meetings per month for the salesperson. Now, what we also know is that 50% of leads actually turn into a sales meeting. So if we're trying to get to 16 sales meetings, now we know that we need 32 leads coming in every single month. So if those leads are self-generated, what you can now tell that salesperson is this is what you're accountable to. You need to be getting at least 32 leads in a month, 16 meetings, and four sales closed every single month. So when you have these solid KPIs, what you can do is you can create accountability. So instead of just saying, I didn't hit my goal this month, you can start to look at the other KPIs as far as, well, how many sales meetings did you have? How many leads did you generate? What was your close ratio? And all of these things that are very important for that person to be successful within their position so that the company itself can be successful as well. So the tip of the pyramid is the inattention to results. So the classic example that comes to mind for this is sales versus marketing. When the team has dysfunction, the marketing person says the salesperson can't close the leads that are coming in. And then the salesperson says the leads that are coming in are no good. And everybody is kind of looking out just for their own self-interest. When you have individuals who are paying attention to their personal results, over the results of the company, this is where this dysfunction is created from, and you wanna make sure that everybody has a commitment to the team results, to the company's results. Now, one of the difficult parts of a team with a lot of dysfunction is there's a lot of stories. There's a lot of backstories. People are like, oh, that person's this way. This person's like that. This doesn't work because of this. And I don't trust that person because of this. Everyone has their past experiences with each other and they've started to build a story in their head of who this person is. And maybe this person's not out for my interest and that person's selfish and that person's lazy. And it's very difficult to all of a sudden one day say, hey, we're gonna fix this. So that's sometimes where an outside consultant is really helpful. As mentioned earlier, the free worksheet in the description below is actually a resource from a friend of mine. His name is Sean Lewis, and he is a business consultant. And what we're gonna be doing in the next video that you can see on the screen is we're gonna be discussing people versus process and how you can take a deeper dive and a deeper look into these two issues and how you can resolve the issues within your business. But in this next video, Sean is going to deliver a ton of value for you on how you can work through the issues you're dealing with at your business so that you can run a finely tuned, well-oiled machine. All right, guys, we'll catch you in this next video.